All right, thank you so much, Samar Chada, for joining English Legal System class. Uh, we have 65 students here with us. They are all year one and semester one students. And last week, they have covered on the topic of legal profession, where they okay. have think about what are the steps where they can be called as an, a solicitor in England and Wales, as well as the options of becoming a barrister in England and Wales. Uh, so, because uh, you are familiar with regards to the sitting for the bar exam in New York, as well as you have extensive knowledge with regards to the Master of Laws program around the world, uh, so it is privileged to be having you here with us today. And I hope uh, all of the students will be asking you a lot of questions after your session. So, if it's okay, you. I'll pass the virtual floor to you and you can resume. Uh, I'll just stop sharing this. Thank you so much, uh, Putri, for that uh, introduction. And uh, a very good morning uh, to everybody uh, that is attending uh, this uh, little talk. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to be able to speak to everyone. Um, so I think um, I'll just maybe start off with uh, a, a little bit of an introduction. You, if, if at all you've already uh, given that. Uh, I have uh, an LLM from uh, the New York University School of Law. I have uh, given the uh, bar exam in New York, uh, cleared it successfully. And uh, also I have um, given the first uh, part of the QLTS, which is the Qualified Lawyers uh, Transfer Scheme, which allows you to uh, become a solicitor in England and Wales. Um, so I've cleared the first part. I was supposed to do the second one uh, this year, but because of the pandemic, our uh, plans have been slightly pushed on to, uh, to next year. Uh, now that I've got that little uh, form formal introduction out of the way, uh, I'll be uh, taking time today to speak to you uh, about uh, the LLM, about my journey as um, a law student and uh, what were some sort of the considerations uh, in my mind when I was considering LLM programs and how has the program helped me, what has been the experience studying for the bar exam. Uh, so I'll, I guess I'll get started. Um, I, my decision to go to NYU uh, was based on my uh, research that I had done uh, on all the universities in the US and uh, a few in the UK as well. Uh, because I have done my previous law degree in India, I, which is part of the common law system, I wanted to go to a, a country that had a similar kind of common law uh, tradition and where I could uh, perhaps use the sort of skills that I had built uh, during my first law uh, degree and just build on those uh, doing my uh, LLM program. I mentioned that because some students that are coming from civil law traditions uh, may find that they do not want to go to a common law degree or they may want to just stay within uh, civil law itself. So that, that could be the first uh, criteria for you to choose an LLM program. Also, uh, some people uh, use their uh, interest and their expertise. So in, in my case, my interests were in commercial law, corporate law, and, and international law. So I used that as a, a sort of mechanism to filter the various universities that I chose. Um, so I chose all the universities that had very good international law programs or very, uh, you know, sort of solid international law professors and also looked at uh, those universities that were in big cities like London or Chicago or New York, which, you know, typically uh, have some of the bigger law firms um, that I was hoping to get some uh, experience from. So those were the two heads uh, that I used and I decided to narrow it down to about a list of, let's say, 10 to 15 universities. And then I further shortlisted that to about eight to 10 universities. Uh, most of them were in the US. There were only two in the UK, uh, both of which, unfortunately, I was not successful in getting admission into because they were very selective, which is the uh, Oxbridge uh, universities. So the fact that I didn't get into some of those made my life easier because I could actually then just narrow down on on some of the, uh, you know, some of the law schools in the US that I had selected. Um, so, you know, before you begin your sort of journey into why you want to do an LLM, maybe you should ask yourself, what is the reason why I want to pursue this? Uh, is it because you want to spend a year outside uh, your home country? Or is it because you want to actually specialize in a particular area of the law? 
or maybe it is because you want to become a solicitor in you know in the UK or you want to qualify for the bar in New York or uh, some people are using um, the LLM as a as a means to settle down in Canada. I know it gives you uh, the opportunity to become a permanent resident. So the first question really is to uh, ask yourself why do you want this degree and why do you want to take that additional eight to nine months of time, energy, and also cost in terms of uh, what is the value add to your life? And answering that question will also help you when you are working on your application materials, because a lot of your uh, personal statements and a lot of your other, you know, motivation letters and those sorts of things uh, also ask you that same question only in a slightly longer, more narrative format. So if you're clear of why you want to uh, do the degree and why you want to pursue it, then that will just help you craft your application materials in uh, in a much better format. Um, in my case, I since I, I was clear that I wanted to do international law or commercial law, I decided uh, to take my courses around those uh, interest areas. So for example, I took a course called as uh, securities regulation. And at the same time, I took a course in contract law because I thought it would be helpful for me when I would be studying for the bar exam in, in New York. So these were the, the courses that I took revolved around commercial law, but at the same time, I tried to also, uh, you know, maybe I took a course on international arbitration, which also allowed me to study how arbitration worked in, uh, you know, in, in sort of international settings. And also the professors that were coming and teaching us were actual people in law firms like Herbert Smith and, and you know, other prestigious just law firms that were ha having offices in New York. So it was very good to learn from their practical experience. Um, you know, it's one thing when you read a book and, and one thing when you go through a, a, a lots of text, but when there's actually somebody who has who is practicing and, and you know, dealing with these things on a daily basis, uh, that really was actually one of my favorite classes, even though I, I mean, I'm not a, somebody who is in the field of arbitration, but I really enjoyed that class a lot because of that practical perspective. Um, and then, uh, you know, after, so the LLM is typically about eight to nine months and uh, you tend to have like two semesters, you can take whatever classes you want. Uh, if you are in a specialization, like I was in the corporate law specialization, um, you know, you have to actually use your courses in such a way that you can meet your requirements. Uh, so you also at the same time have to uh, do certain courses that are required for the bar exam, which was in this case, the New York bar exam. So like I, as I mentioned, the contracts course was something that would help me on the bar exam. Then there's a basic intro to US law course that you have to do. And then there's also a, a graduate lawyering course. So, you know, if you, if you're concerned that how will I be able to manage all of these requirements and how will I be able to, um, structure my course curriculum in a way that is going to be helpful for me for the bar exam. That is something that your uh, university will help you with. So it's not uh, most of the people that do end up graduating have enough credits that allow them to be eligible to write the bar exam. So, um, you know, don't worry about that. Just work with your uh, curriculum supervisors and, and they'll be able to help you structure your co courses in such a way that you can also get the, you know, get the requirement out of the way and at the same time study what you want to. So for example, I took a course in my second semester on product liability, which is like what is considered an advanced tort course. So that was also very, very uh, exciting and, and it kind of helped me understand some of the basic negligence principles which are tested uh, on, on the bar exam. So the LLM, you know, that was about eight, nine months, finished that. And after that, I decided to study for the bar exam, which is a, a really arduous process because it's two months and, um, you know, you have a lot of content. Uh, there are about 12 to 13 subjects, which are spread out over a period of two days. And it's, it's almost like you go in, uh, you have a morning afternoon session, and then on the next day, you have another morning and afternoon session. So it's like six hours on one day and six hours on another day. It can be really tiring because you, by the time you get to the center in the morning, it's like 7.30. And by the time you leave, it's 
it's five five thirty and and you know you're exhausted it's been a long day and then you have to go through the same thing again on uh, the next day itself um especially for people who are coming from a different legal system you know if you've studied in the us for three years i think you've had enough time for those concepts to sort of soak into your brain and you you're used to some of these ideas and principles because you've studied them in a in a classroom setting but for most foreign trained lawyers uh, it can be a little challenging in trying to you know just six five six weeks of the summer before your bar exam to kind of cram everything together um, but luckily there are a lot of wonderful uh, prep courses that are available so it's not entirely impossible there's lots of like revision notes and flashcards and there's a whole um, industry around bar prep which um, you know i'd be happy to mention later in the in the chat box a few that i used and you know which were helpful to me um I mean, there's a whole industry that is has been set up, but uh, sometimes it, it can get a little misleading uh, because you tend to spend a lot of time watching videos and perhaps not enough time solving the actual questions because you actually have to go and solve some of these, um, you know, multiple choice questions and essay questions. And there's also a performance test, which is uh, included as part of the uh, exam structure. So you start off with a performance test, you have the t- it's always held on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So the Tuesday afternoon session will be um, the essay section. And then the whole of Wednesday will be all multiple choice. So um, it's important to practice all three components of the exam because uh, usually what happens is people underestimate the performance test. And then when they, put, you know, when the final day comes, they actually feel like, oh, wow, this performance test is a lot harder than I thought it would be because I focused all of my time on the essays or on the multiple choice questions. So it's important to, um, you know, sort of practice some of those in, in the right manner so that you're, you're devoting enough time or at least, you know, balancing your energy in a way. Um, and, and also it's very helpful to keep a routine during that time frame because, um, Sometimes, you know, it's easy to just feel like you can study all day, but I used to take these long walks because, uh, you know, it was just helpful for me to like take uh, like a half an hour walk out of the library and just walk around anywhere. I was in New York, so it's always nice to walk around New York in the summer. But I was also uh, listening to a lot of my uh, outlines in audio format, which was, I thought, a little easier because, you know, you get bored reading text or maybe I shouldn't say this to a group of law students right now who are young and who are sort of you know looking at at a very long career in the law but yes it can it can get a little boring to uh, to read some of these outlines so it's just easier to listen to um, uh, some of them uh, while you're you know maybe you're grabbing your lunch or you're sort of doing something else maybe even while you're working out um, so unfortunately despite having worked very hard for clearing the bar exam. I didn't clear it in the first go, so I actually had to go back to New York and give it again, uh, which happens to a lot of uh, internationally trained lawyers is that that time period between May when they finish the LLM program and they actually, um, you know, when they actually give the exam is not enough. And uh, sometimes you'll see people might just miss the bar exam by like a very small whisker, like hardly a few points. And uh, that's something like that happened in my case, just had a few bad questions. And then um, I saw myself not clearing and I was really upset. And and I was also working full time at the same time. So it was a little challenging to find time to study. Uh, But I made uh, coffee and Starbucks my best friend. And after uh, finishing with, you know, work, which was sometimes it would be 7 p.m. or sometimes it was 9. I always went to a Starbucks and I studied every single day uh, because I knew I really wanted to clear the bar exam because that's sort of the reason why I went for the LLM was to be dual qualified. So I spent, uh, I remember I got the news uh, around October and then from November till February, I was, you know, like like a madman trying to clear the bar exam and really studying very hard and, and focusing more on practice questions, which is why I mentioned that, you know, sometimes it can be misleading because you spend a lot of time um, watching videos and reading outlines, but it's really about the practice. And then luckily, uh, the second time around, after much hard work, I was able to clear all all the three parts of the exam. And then I got some good news in, in April and I was very excited. And I, I took a, a box of sweets and I, I gave them to everybody in the office. And everyone was also very happy for me that I, 
I cleared the, the New York bar exam. Um, I think some benefits are that, uh, you know, if you're working for a client that is a U.S. multinational or if you are um, trying to practice in an international market, uh, the qualification does have a lot of weight. Um, uh, I, I, it's perhaps not comparable to the English law qualification because a lot of transactions are done in English law. So that has its own value. Sometimes people ask, you know, can I do this instead of that? I think both are sort of valuable in their own way. Um, so if you're thinking about it, uh, definitely go for the LLM and definitely do, you know, consider uh, writing for the bar. Uh, some people even do more than one state, which is also a, a bit difficult and crazy. But, you know, people have done that. They like, like New York bar exam, they like, like California and even certain other states, you know, where they're planning to practice. So uh, it's not unheard of to write more than one bar exam. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know. Sorry, I think somebody's mic is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, I think I had some points here that I was going to, okay, yeah. I was also going to talk to you a little about uh, QLTS, which is, um, so uh, the law firm that I was working for at the time, um, they used to do a lot of um, English law opinions. And uh, so I thought it would be helpful to also study for uh, the English law qualification, which is, you know, the QLTS. And so once again, you know, I started off, I mean, I remember I, I was asking myself, I've already studied for the New York bar for so long. Do I really have the energy to study for another, you know, qualification? But I, I'm, I'm in Dubai. So, you know, here uh, a lot of the free zones are based out of, um, are based on English law. So having that knowledge is actually uh, very helpful. And so I felt that, okay, uh, it would be of immense practical uh, value and benefit to me if I actually got that knowledge. So I started studying for uh, the first part of the QLTS, which is uh, the multiple choice test or the MCT. And um, that is about, uh, I think it's like 180 questions or so of, again, like 11, 12 areas, but this time they're based on the law in uh, the UK. So you'll have your typical, you know, usual sub suspects like torts, criminal law or property. Uh, but in this exam, what I found more uh, difficult than uh, the New York bar is that there's actually principles of finance and accounting and, you know, solicitors accounts and inheritance taxes and equity and trusts. And then some of those topics, you know, had me, I was like, wow, what's going on here? Because, you know, the things that criminal law and torts and all, they, you're, you're used to studying that because you, you might have studied that in law school. If you've done an LLM, you might have studied that, you know, during your LLM. But Sitting down with a with a you know solicitor's accounts book was uh, was I think a little challenging and in fact I was really really worried about that part uh, right before the exam because I was like I've never really done this you know uh, professionally so I don't know if I'm going to be able to clear uh, this first so I see more no about the first part of the of the British exam rather than the you know even the fact that I didn't clear the New York bar is actually more like pumped about that this one I was like okay I don't know about this part um, but I used uh, again you know there are prep courses available so I used a, a very good prep course which I would also Um, uh, and I studied for the exam. Again, it's a little challenging to study for these exams while you're working. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have an employer that is uh, supportive of your decision or you have, you know, a coffee shop nearby, it's always helpful to just, you know, pump yourself with caffeine and, and overcompensate on the weekends and, and uh, you know, sort of just go through these uh, exams and try to clear them. So I took that in, um, in about, I think, January of 2019. And then you get the result uh, pretty much in like three or four weeks, and I was successful in uh, in clearing that. So uh, that has been the story as far as uh, English law is concerned. Uh, I have been sort of you know wanting to go back and give the second part, but it actually involves you traveling uh, to the UK and you know going there, and uh, and of course given the pandemic and travel restrictions. Um, that is not really feasible at this time. Um, so I'm just waiting for, you know, things to clear up. So yeah, that's been uh, my journey in terms of, uh, you know, as you can see, a lot of studying, a lot of like qualifications and a lot of like, I guess, uh, you know, just uh, trying to push through some of these, uh, uh, you know, international exams and things like that. But it's exciting because 
uh, hopefully it'll all be worth it uh, you know at some point in terms of uh, and it, it already has, has been worth it in, in many ways because most of the um, you know whenever you do an llm people do expect that you might have given a bar exam and they ask you uh, so luckily i've uh, i've had one interview where i had to actually tell them that i wasn't successful and they were luckily they were very sympathetic uh, and they were like no i think you should go back and probably give the exam but i was like yeah yeah i'm planning to do so uh, and even with the um, with the qlts actually uh, so so one caveat on on the qlts is that it is uh, a limited time offer because there it's actually going to be replaced with the sqe very soon uh, so people that are planning to give the qlts um uh, need to give it like soon otherwise that option won't be there anymore then everybody is just going to have to give a one standard bar exam so yeah i was coming to the point about the the qlts is that some law firms will even pay for your prep courses and some will even you know encourage you to take that time off go to the uk and and qualify because it's actually it's actually helpful for them when they are uh, you know wanting you to come with that kind of advice issue those english law opinions or you know look for clients that need that kind of advice so if you're wondering how am i going to be able to do all of this with, with with or without the support of you know my employer just to let you know that you know many of them if their business interest is there they will uh, definitely uh, support you um so yeah i think uh, you know i'd be happy to go more into detail into any of these uh, i thought i'll just give a broad overview of of whatever i have done and uh, hopefully it's helpful to all of you guys okay thank you so much so much for sharing your experiences yeah looking for llm exam as well as bar exam as well as uk exam so i can tell that you have spent many many years uh, pursuing your uh, studies yeah. even after you have acquired your bachelor of law degrees Uh, so, but before I move on with the Q and A session, I would like to launch a poll to get all students just to answer two questions. It will be very quick, and then see if they have already know their pathways after they have completed their law degree. So, I'll just see the general overview of law students in my class if they know exactly what they're planning to do after they get their LLB. Okay, so let's see. We have question number one. Have you decided on what to do after obtaining law degree? So the answer mostly yes, with fifty nine percent. We have okay more students answering yes. Uh, for question number two, what is your plan after completing your law degree? So the answer varies from sitting for the bar course, sitting for the CLP exam. Majority will be sitting for the CLP exam. Uh, we also have uh, one student who uh, we have eight students who would like to pursue for additional qualification, and we also have a number of students who are not sure yet uh, whether what are their plans when they have completed their law degree. Okay, not to worry, but at least a majority of students they already know what they they plan to do. Uh, but that's the reason why we're having this session today. Uh, for those students who are not sure, we have sixteen uh, students here who are not sure what are their plans. Uh, my advice is usually you speak to your parents uh, whether or not they are okay with having you to continue studying for the bar exam in UK or for you to come back to Malaysia and then sit for the ELP exam. Uh, but some students also like to sit for LLM, so that's why we're having some up here who can share with regards to which university it's. Uh, most preferred or which uh, university is suitable for students to sit for their LLM because as you know we have thousands of universities around the world offering so many LLM programs you have general LLM program you have specialized LLM program some are set for LLM uh, in corporate law uh, yeah. I set for my LLM in commercial law so maybe some students also I want to do LLM but I'm not sure which area of specialization So, if you have any question with regards to LLM, or if you have any question with regards to uh, international students sitting for bar exam in New York, uh, you may type your question or you may unmute yourself, and you can ask your question directly. But to get the ball rolling, yep. So we have. Most students either between sitting for CLP exam or do not know. All right. So what I'll do is I'll ask Samar the first question. You mentioned that you sit for.
for New York bar exam, but before that, you set for LLM, right? Yes. Uh, is it a qualification for you to sit for the New York bar exam for you to do LLM in US? Or can you do LLM in, let's say, Malaysia or in UK and then straight away do the bar exam in New York? So uh, it depends because if you are coming from a, a system like, um, you know, if it is entirely, uh, is Malaysia considered entirely common law or it is a mixture of common law and civil law? It's entirely common law. Entirely common law. Okay, then it is possible because uh, countries that are considered entirely common law, like uh, you know, the Australia, UK, Canada, they do basis on the basis of their law degree, they can actually write uh, the bar exam without the LLM. What happens with in the Indian context is that they actually need the LLM in order to be able to write uh, the bar exam. So that's what happened in my case. But if it is considered entirely common law, then you might be, uh, it might be helpful just to see if people from Malaysia that are, you know, that have gone, uh, have graduated law school previously, have they, uh, are they able to write the bar exam straight away? I'm guessing probably yes. Okay. Uh, but since I don't know any example in my mind, I don't want to say for sure. So just helpful to see if you're able to do that, then you don't need to do the LLM. You can just write the bar uh, by itself. For the QLTS, you can write that uh, straight away. So you don't need to, uh, you know, necessarily have an LLM. You can do it right after you have uh, uh, your law degree. Okay. Uh, we have a question here. If I plan to do the bar exam in England, and I want to do the bar in New York, what pathway do you suggest? Uh, is LLB okay. enough or LLB? Sorry, is LLB enough or do I need to take LLM? I think if, uh, yeah, so my suggestion would be to get an LLM in either of the countries, like at least either the UK or the US, because uh, what will happen is uh, if you just have a LLB, uh, a foreign LLB, and you're looking for a position somewhere, you know, in the US or the UK, uh, you'll be competing with people who have graduated uh, on both sides of the Atlantic, you know, from very, very good universities. So uh, it, it just gets a little more challenging uh, if you don't have that local uh, stamp of approval. I think when, you know, because you might be up against somebody from, let's say, Oxford, Cambridge, LSE, and at the same time, you might be on this side you'll have Harvard, NYU, uh, Columbia, all these graduates. Um, so I would suggest getting at least one LLM from either of these places because uh, that will help you if your goal is not to work in these countries and just simply to uh, you know have that uh, degree where you have uh, or having that standing of a bar qualification, then perhaps the QLTS is the easiest uh, way to get in. Uh, and then if that, uh, you know, if, if coming from Malaysia, you can actually write the bar without the LLM, then by all means do that as well. But <laughs> just don't go crazy studying like probably how I did. Okay, thank you so much. We have another question. Uh, yes. The second question is, if I use the field of law, I would like to work. Uh, after graduation, would you recommend a general LLM or a specialization? Uh, I think I would I would recommend a specialization because uh, what happens when you work for a law firm is that typically they want to know what your expertise area is because see what happens in, in a law firm is that they are uh, at the end of the day they are a commercial practice that is driven by business so they need to know okay what is this what are you good at and what can we uh, you know exploit and sort of put you in front of clients so that you can bring more business for the firm so if you have a specialization I think it's a little easier to uh, get them thinking. Uh, at, the, at the same time, you know, having a general LLM allows you to do multiple things and you can pursue multiple interest areas. But if your goal is to work, then I think I would say a specialization makes it easier for the law firm to understand that, okay, this person knows corporate or this person knows arbitration. So let's put them in the arbitration practice team or, okay, this person has, you know, some understanding of international law. So maybe they'll be very good for, you know, this international practice group that we have, or, or maybe some other country that's so, in order to think like a law firm, maybe it's better to have a specialization because you can tell them, I know X, Y, and Z, which you can actually leverage. Uh, so. Okay, okay. I agree with that. Uh, riding on your uh, explanation, uh, even at Taylor's Law School itself, we offer two specialized programs. You don't have a general LLM program. One is catered for international business and trade law. 
uh, most students are usually working in a big organization and involves dealing with trade with another country. So right. which is right, just like how some of my kids good if you specialize in the area. We also have LLM in healthcare medical law, uh, like for example, doctors. Uh, now more and more doctors would like to learn about law and regulations when they deal with patients, doc, uh, they face chances of patients suing them. So what are their, what are the things that they need to be aware of? Uh, so yeah, it's good if your LLM are specialized in a certain area so it can make you to be more, more, uh, more in need. Yeah. We also have a question. People are saying employers in Malaysia prefer bar graduates from uh, England rather than local graduates. Um, well, from your point of view, Samat, uh, do you agree with right? in other countries, do, you, do they prefer foreign graduates or they, there is a balance between local as well as bad foreign graduates? I think uh, what I have seen is that, uh, yes, there is a slight tendency towards uh, preferring somebody that has studied in another uh, legal system because typically they will be able to understand not just their own legal system, but also another country's. And so they're that much faster in, in terms of, you know, doing and getting things and understanding laws. And also if they're coming with these added qualifications, like, uh, you know, the uh, uh, sort of the bar exam of another country, then the law firm is that much more interested. However, it, it just depends on that initial interview, you know, sometimes and across the table, somebody has to look at you and be like, okay, if this person didn't go for an LLM, doesn't mean that they're still not good enough, you know, let's give them a chance. So uh, that I think it'll just help you initially. But after that, once you get into the firm, you know, you still have to prove yourself. So regardless of whether you're coming with an LLB or just an or an LLB and an LLM, it's only that initial hurdle. And even during that process, somebody might still, uh, you know, decide that and depending on how your interview goes, uh, they might actually decide to, you know, back you or put that faith in you, uh, regardless of you uh, not having an LLM or not having any foreign bar qualification. Okay, I, I completely agree with you. It all depends how you perform during the interview process. Yeah. Even though you do not have LLM or even though you're a local grad, doesn't mean that uh, you can't compete with the foreign grad. You have yes. Better than foreign graduates. Uh, we have a lot, quite a number of questions here. I hope sure. you bear with this. Yeah, uh, no, no problem. Question on whether LLM is better than the bar exam or should I do both? Okay, uh, I think uh, my advantage, my my recommendation is that the bar exam is uh, also like you should, if you're doing the LLM, then you should do the bar exam as well because what happens is at least in the world of commercial practice is that people it's just a natural question when you tell them oh okay so you're you've done the LLM are you licensed there are you or are you licensed to practice in more than one jurisdiction? Uh, in fact, there's a silly quote that I saw uh, I think on Instagram which says that a lawyer that knows only one constitution knows no constitution or something like that. So it's like trying to say that you need to know more than one constitution. So I don't know who that is, but uh, at least having that um, knowledge and that ability to, you know, and it goes back to um, uh, trying to bring, bring business for the firm, because if you are licensed in another jurisdiction, uh, even if you have an LLM from there, you can later make a case for maybe doing some kind of work or bringing more people from, let's say you, you did your LLM in the UK and now you also have your bar from there, uh, you might be able to you know, deal with uh, certain companies that want that kind of English law advice uh, in your home country. And, and then, you know, you can bring more, more business for the firm. So I think that way, yes, it is definitely uh, go give the bar exam. It's also a very uh, good experience, even professionally. You tend to become a better lawyer, I feel, if you study in, in two different countries, because you can always compare it to your home jurisdiction. And the confidence that it gives you as a, in terms of a, you know, a person that you've given these difficult exams and cleared them, uh, they also help you when you go into interviews. And you can, uh, even if there's somebody sitting with you know, 15, 20 years of work experience, if you have have whatever you might have no experience or you might just have a bar qualification it just helps you you know broaden your shoulders and kind of sit because you you know that okay you know you have under stressful timed conditions you have done well so you can bring those skills to a law firm and especially kind of leverage that uh, during an interview as well uh, so if you're doing an LLM you might as well uh, take that extra step give the bar exam as well 
Yeah, Samra is absolutely correct. So if, if you consider of sitting for LLM, so why not pay a ten additional a one year, or probably less than one year, bar exam, so that you gain extra skills, extra knowledge. Maybe you won't feel it now, but when you work in the uh, organization or in the law firms, future clients would want to see your qualification, and if they like, you have knowledge with regards to the United States or UK, so the client might engage your law firm. Uh, on a separate note, I have a friend who studied uh, locally at the local uh, public university in Malaysia so he, because he likes anime so much so he took one electives on Japanese language so back then everyone was wondering you're a Malay boy why are you studying Japanese language but he said he just enjoy anime so what happens when you work in a law firm there is this client Panasonic who's looking oh. with uh, lawyers so he said, okay, I'm going to get you because you can speak Japanese. So that's good. He has a big client, which is from Panasonic itself, engaging that law firm just because even though he's a local grad from public uni, because he can speak the client's language. So you got a point there, Samar. We also have a question. Uh, what are the pathways after doing LLM? Why do people do LLM? So, uh, you know, as I said, uh, one is to pursue uh, an expertise area. Uh, some people, they want to get into teaching, so they might feel that getting this, uh, this degree and this experience is very helpful when you come back to your home country or, you know, if you want to work for an international university, you can teach courses uh, based on what you studied during your LLM. Uh, so if you want to get into teaching, it's a very uh, good pathway into academia. Um, another thing could be that maybe you want to get some work experience in another country. So let's say you do your LLM from the UK or US or Australia, and maybe, you know, you get an extension of your study permit and you can actually um, uh, perhaps you know, get a few months of work experience, sometimes get a whole year as well. Um, also, you might, uh, you know, during the LLM, you might, uh, if you're going to a country like Canada, you might be able to actually convert that to a permanent residence and then, you know, stay on there. So the LLM becomes like the first step in a journey uh, towards actually becoming a citizen of that country. So there are many pathways available, academia, corporate, uh, you know, using the degree, maybe you can go migrate to another country. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's important to keep all of these uh, perspectives in mind when you're when you're kind of considering uh, the degree. Uh, if I can add, I, uh, so I actually started something like, um, uh, you know, an organization or an initiative called the LLM Guru, which is, uh, I am no self-proclaimed guru. I just thought it would be a nice name. So I, I decided to use that. And what we do is, uh, if you follow us on Instagram, we have a lot of people um, that come in and you know post their photo or, or or like a video, and they talk about their journey and how the degree has helped them, and how um, perhaps you know what are the different pathways available, what are the different criteria that is available when uh, that is used when you know people are applying for these programs. So I would encourage you to uh, follow us on Instagram or at least check the page out if you're considering the LLM. So we give you an idea of what kind of journey people have uh, and you know it will be for you okay all right thank you so much uh you mentioned that you have set up an instagram page for LLM. yes uh you have That's a lot of program directors and students sharing their experiences with the llm program uh there is a question from arjun is it possible to non-English speaking countries bar exam like Korean bar? Okay, I, I wouldn't know about that because most of the, uh, you know, the LLM uh, advisory work or, you know, the, the tip students that I've seen are, are mostly in, in countries like the US, UK, Australia, Canada. Uh, but it might be helpful to uh, either use LinkedIn or or maybe get in touch with the bar association there and ask them because uh, I I did I, I was aware of a student from Korea that came uh, to my law school studied did a um, you know a law degree and went back so perhaps there could be an opportunity where you can go in and you know you can write the bar exam even if you've done law in a in a different uh, jurisdiction so it might just be helpful to uh, to write to the bar association or use linkedin and find uh, somebody that has kind of pursued that path so you can at least reach out to them and in real time find out you know how easy or difficult it is yeah Okay, thank you so much. Actually, that's a good question because I'm also not sure of the answer whether it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, uh, there's a question. It's quite long. Uh, the mm -hmm. UK bus exam fees and cost of living is very high. Uh, is there any scholarship for students to go to bar school? Are you maybe you're talking about the LPC probably, or you're talking about uh, you know just in general perhaps the LLM programs? Uh, yes, there are scholarships available. Uh, so there are a few of these you know uh, foundations and trusts like Chevening scholarships and in lakhs and a few others uh, that are available. Um, also, what you can do is, let's say for the LLM, if you're looking at a particular university, they have also countrywide uh, scholarships. So they might have a special scholarship for people coming from uh, Malaysia. They might have a special scholarship for you know Asia Pacific. So it can go as minute or as broad as um, uh, the university chooses to describe. Uh, so I, I would just suggest uh, that you go to the particular university's website and you can look at exactly uh you know based on the country where you're applying from what scholarships are available but there are definitely scholarships available correct correct okay good to know about that uh, yeah. uh, do you recommend us to take llm or bar exam first or is it possible if i take both at the same time um it's so i think with with if you, if it's possible for you to take the bar without taking the LLM, like if you're coming from uh, Malaysia or you're coming from a system that allows you to do that, I would still suggest doing the LLM first because it might be tempting to uh, do the bar exam, but you know it's very difficult to do both at the same time. Also, um, the time that you spend in the LLM program will be helpful for you when you're actually giving the bar exam. So you know, learning about those. Um, principles of the of the legal system that you are wanting to give the bar exam in uh, it's it's helpful to maybe give the llm first and then write the bar exam okay all right uh, i also agree but again mm -hmm. it depends uh, it depends on the students some students would want to study the bar exam first and then look and then gain experience because he, he or she doesn't know the area of specialization uh, but again you have to bear in mind that depending on the employer if they are supportive of your uh, pathways, whether or not they support you with the ideas of you pursuing their, your studies LLM. Some employers say, no, nope, you should be committed to this uh, particular work. Uh, some lawyers say, yes, you can. But again, there are a lot of consideration that you need to take into account if you need to balance family, if let's say you have children down the road, so it becomes much more difficult if you push it to a later year. So if you can do it, now, when you're young, when you have no commitment, it will be much more beneficial to you. We also have a question. Is it, uh, do you experience culture shock when you went overseas? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, you know, culture shock is, uh, is part of the whole deal uh, because, you know, if you've, I mean, I went to the US, so, you know, the Americans do everything very differently from the rest of the world. Uh, even simple things like, you know, have, uh, the Celsius to Fahrenheit to, you know, kilometers to uh, meters and then just their spellings and so many things. Uh, so, yes, culture shock is is there. Uh, but I think what, what helps is that uh, on, on campus, there are a lot of these uh, uh, associations that are available, like campus organizations. So, uh, I, you know, I joined, uh, since I'm from South Asia, I joined South Asian Law Students Association. And, you know, I, I got to uh, celebrate some of the Indian functions that we have and, and, you know, just sort of felt that sense of community. And I also ventured out and I, I even attended like, you know, Brazilian Law Students Association and Latino Law Students Association. So uh, I, I really use that time to uh, bond with other people from other cultures, uh, yet at the same time also foster a very strong understanding with uh, people that were perhaps coming from a similar background like myself, just to not feel that sense of isolation or home homesickness that, you know, one feels, especially in the beginning period. Um, the, after, you know, about, let's say, three or four weeks, you get so acclimatized to your environment that uh, you don't feel that uh, that culture shock anymore uh, rather you begin to enjoy it you know you begin like how oh, I used to take long walks or perhaps you will begin to enjoy some of the uh, you know the surroundings that you have or perhaps you know these these student organizations have these events so you're always attending all of those and and you're also very busy because you know unlike um, 
maybe business school or or some of the more fun uh, graduate degrees where they're socializing and you know they're doing all sorts of these things uh, law is actually a lot of studying uh, so you you know you you'll get really busy after a while and and you won't really have time to feel homesick or or you know uh, feel anything except just okay how do i get this reading and how do i get into the next reading and how do i you know study for these exams so you know time flies Okay, correct, correct. I agree with you because I remember when I was in Australia, uh, when I moved there, okay. at the first few weeks, you were busy because you're moving houses, you're buying stuff for your new rooms and then doing groceries and then suddenly before classes start, you have that period where you buy yourself, that's where you started to miss your family, your cats, yes. yeah. your friends. But once classes have started, you have no time to miss anyone. In fact, you'll be too busy to the extent that you do not want to come back and then see your family because you enjoy the new culture. Uh, when I was in Australia, every Saturday, they have like a surfing practice. So you're able to surf. Uh, and then after that, you meet uh, friends from all of, around the world. So we will take wow. we have like a week of a potluck session. So today we'll go to this house and then we'll eat uh, Arabian food. And then we went to this house and we'll eat like uh, Latin type of food. So it, yes. it's nice. Yeah. You, you gain new culture. You gain, you learn new experience. Uh, we also have a question. I plan not to work in the law field after doing the bar exam, but I kind of want to do the bar exam in US. Is LLB enough to do the New York bar? I think you have already addressed this question, right? It depends on the Commonwealth country. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on, you know, if you're coming from a system uh, which is considered entirely common law, then you can write the bar exam uh, straight away. Uh, if it's considered mixed or it's considered civil law, then you won't be able to do that. Yeah. So I think students uh, sitting, uh, if having LLB from Australia, Malaysia or UK, uh, they can do the New York bar exam. And it's only for two months, right? You mentioned? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, what no, just the preparation is for two months, uh, but you can write the bar exam twice in a year, uh, okay. so it's like that. Usually in July or in February, uh, this year the exam got pushed to September because of the pandemic. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, so we also have another question Does the salary of foreign graduates differ from local graduates? Uh, I think it, it might because, uh, you know, typically if if you are having that foreign qualification, you might be able to break into um, a slightly better firm or you might be able to break into an international law firm where, you know, salaries tend to be a lot higher than sort of the internet, than the domestic or regional law firms. Uh, but, you know, that it, it just depends because sometimes you'll ha you might find people who are local law graduate, graduates because they have years of experience or knowledge and they've kind of moved up the ranks and now they're very successful. So uh, there's really no one straight jacket formula to these things. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know, because as I said, you know, it's only that initial um, interview and then after that you have to prove yourself. Uh, so it might be a good idea to, you know, keep that also in the back of your mind. Uh, don't just do it because you think you'll get a higher salary or, or you know, don't just pursue the bar exam because you think it's a ticket to, you know, becoming really rich or something like that. Because uh, after you clear these exams, you're you're just as good as how well you do in that job and how well you, uh, you know, perform and and how you know whether you're supported by your team members and those sorts of things. So I think whether you work in a in a regional or local or you know even international law firm, those dynamics will will still remain. So uh, just do it for the perhaps the love of learning or the fact that you really want to do it rather than that money thing because if, if it doesn't end up that way you might disappoint yourself yeah correct i completely agree with you because most of my friends when we graduate at the same time when some of them work in a law firm so now they are all at partner level at the, their yeah. law firms so when they share with me when it comes to uh interview question on salary so they always assume that foreign graduates will get higher salary but then the day as a partner of the law firm they'll be like i you haven't even worked with me. How am I supposed to know what type of skills can you bring to my law firm? Yeah, yeah. You are absolutely correct. It is all about what type of skills and how you can improve yourself when you work in the law firm, irrespective if you're local grad or if you're foreign grad. Yeah. Right. Okay, I don't have any more questions here with me. Uh, and it's already 11 a.m. Thank you so much, Samar. Oh, yeah, thank you so much and it was lovely talking to everyone and uh, have a nice day thank you 
so if there's anyone else who would like to ask any question, you can unmute yourself. But otherwise, I'll let Mr. Samak go so that he can continue doing his job. And don't forget to follow him on LLM Guru on Instagram. Yes, and you can also email me. I've put it on the in the chat box. So in case you weren't able to ask your question or you just have any other thing you want to talk about, please feel free to reach out. All right, all right. Okay, I think okay. everyone managed to get their answers for today. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.